new nerfs are on the way, which means, uh, yeah, these could be the new versions of these cards. Will they be? Probably not, but could be. Hey, buddy, watch this. Yeah, if you missed it, the Hearthstone dev team uh, did an AMA Ask Me Anything on Reddit today. Got a ton of questions and a lot of cool insights. You should go check that out for sure. I put a link in the description below. But this was the thing that really caught my eye. They teased upcoming nerfs to a ton of cards, specifically one or two cards in Demon Hunter, Sacrificial Pact, Bad Luck Albatross, Frenzied Fellwing, Kael'thas, and in wild format, Open the Waygate and Blood Bloom. So I wanted to take a look at each of those and take my guess on how I think Blizzard will nerf these cards. Keep in mind, I'm not recommending any of these. I'm saying this is what I think will happen based on past precedents for Blizzard and how they tend to balance the game. That said, let's jump into my predictions. And for Demon Hunter, they did not specify which cards they were planning to adjust, but my first guess is Alturus the Outcast. This is really the one people have been clamoring for the most, and I have to say, Alturus does feel very powerful. If there's any card I were going to nerf in Demon Hunter, this would probably be the one. And in this case, I bumped Alturus up to four mana from three mana. Now, many people have been calling for a change to Alturus that he only impacts enemy minions, as opposed to the enemy's face, which I do agree would be a good change, but I don't think Blizzard's going to make that change for one really, really silly reason. It's hard to put that much card text on Alturus. I tried when I did it in the custom card generator. That extra word, enemy minions, makes it hard for the text to break really nicely on Alturus. And believe it or not, that stuff is really important to Blizzard. Now, of course, they may have some way to adjust the text to make it fit, that may be a silly prediction uh, in my case, but I think what'll happen is they'll just move him to four mana, making him harder to squeeze in a turn and limiting the number of cards you can play alongside Alturus. There will still be those crazy, you know, Skull of Gul'dan and like twin slice outs that you can have some big turns with, which is fine. A card should be powerful. It should be good, but this will make it a little bit slower, reduce some of those, you know, chaining one mana spells like Sigil Runners, for instance, those turns won't be quite as powerful. So occasionally Alturus will whiff or he would have otherwise been very strong. And that's why I think a four mana move here from three mana is sufficient and will probably be what Blizzard does just to keep things a little bit tidier for Alturus. So after reviewing uh, some other Demon Hunter cards, I thought might get nerfed things like say Priestess of Fury, even Warglaves of Azanoth, believe it or not. The card I settled on is really just Battle Fiend. It's another one people are really commonly asking for, and I think in many cases Blizzard would happily oblige those requests. Beyond that, it does have a pretty crazy high win rate on turn one. You get this thing down early in the game, there's a very good chance you're going to win as Demon Hunter, and that's far higher than many other turn one cards, and I think Blizzard will look at that turn-by-turn -turn data as they've done in the past. And what that means is maybe just making this a 1-2 at its base level would really help. Uh, a 2-2 is already good with cards like Blazing Battle Mage, and when that 2-2 can start to scale up into a 3-2, it really contests those early minion plays. It does a little bit additional chip damage against your opponent, which adds up over the course of the game. So just slowing that down a hair means this trades less effectively, and it does less damage, but still serves as a nice one-drop for Demon Hunter in an attack synergy build, and gives you that upside occasionally, because it's still going to be a 2-2 when it attacks in many cases on turn 2, which comparatively uh, makes it similar to things like Battle Mage, but with additional upside if it lives or if you can play, you know, multiple attacks as many things can. With War Gleaves of Azanoth, Battle Fiend can still scale much higher. So this would be a change that would reduce its power level, but maybe retain some playability, which is exactly what Blizzard likes to do. I don't think they'd push this one to two mana just because that would really, really kill the card. And I don't think that's what they want to do. So I think the rare stat adjustment when they typically favor mana maneuvering would happen in the case of Battle Fiends. So now let's move over to the cards that were confirmed being looked at with Sacrificial Pact up first. A lot of people have been asking for this one in a couple different ways. Number one, people don't like that it kills Lord Jaraxxus because that means Jaraxxus really never gets played because Zephyrus will offer Sacrificial Pact in those instances, which means Zephyrus is everywhere. You can't play Jaraxxus. That does 
feel pretty unfortunate because I too love Jaraxxus. Beyond that, this just serves as a really big counter to Demon Hunter uh, class that's running a lot of demons. Now, if this does get nerfed so that it is less powerful against Demon Hunter, that's even more reason to nerf the Demon Hunter cards we already talked about. Now, how will this be changed, right? Uh, I added here destroy a friendly demon instead of specifically any demon. Uh, that means that you would only be able to use this as a heal. It would still be great in something like a Galakron Warlock, for instance, trading in that 1-1 one -one imp for a heal, but it wouldn't have that utility uh, for your opponent's stuff. And I did that namely because if you look carefully at the text Blizzard provided, they mentioned that they'd like the idea for Lord Jaraxxus to be more playable, which indicates to me that they're not looking to adjust the mana cost of this card, say making it one or two mana per perhaps, because that would still mean Jaraxxus is unplayable against Zephyrus. If they're specifically saying they want Jaraxxus to make sense, then that means they're probably going to adjust this to only affecting friendly demons instead of enemy ones, which means you can't cast it on the enemy Jaraxxus. Maybe you could still cast it on your own as a fun little Easter egg, but beyond that, I think it would stay at zero mana, go friendly, and that would be fine for a card like this. Moving on to Kael'thas Sunstrider, Blizzard said they wanted Kael'thas to retain some of its combo potential without having those absolutely crazy blow-up moments that it has right now. And I thought instead of reducing cards to zero, maybe reducing them to one would enable still some big plays to be made, but it wouldn't be able to go absolutely insane earlier in the game. Because essentially what this means is, you can't use just any given spell to set up your Kael'thas. Like right now, you know, you could use a two mana spell and a two mana spell, and then your third spell's free. Boom, you're good to go. Now, if you use a two mana spell, two mana spell, that's all 10 mana gone. You can't play that third spell, and you could only play a certain number of spells in a given turn, right? Uh, if you spend six on Kael'thas, uh, even if you had a couple, um, you know, one mana spells, you're still not going to be able to get much out because... That one mana of the final spell, the third spell itself, is going to stack up and really limit how many times you can go off in a single turn, reducing the impact of those crazy combos in wild format in particular, but also limiting the scope a little bit in standard as well. Still enables you to cheat things out. You might get a couple big spells out of it cheated, but nothing where it's going to go infinite or do just you know four or five in a row that are nuts. So just putting a cap basically on Kael'thas. Many people have asked, uh, for it to only work on the third spell, not every third spell. I think that would be a little bit too limiting for Kael'thas and would really kill what the card can do. So this is maybe a little bit of a middle ground that feels more in line with how Blizzard talked about Kael'thas specifically in this AMA. So next up is Frenzied Felwing, currently a 4-mana 3-3 you can cheat out. I think this one's pretty simple. I suspect they'll just move it to 5-mana. I've had so many instances, particularly in Demon Hunter, where I get this thing to exactly zero, and sometimes I just get it to one, and I'm still pretty happy to play it. So I think a one mana adjustment here is more than enough for Frenzied Felwing, and I think Blizzard will recognize that fact as well. I don't think it needs more than this. This is going to kill it on, you know, one out of every five turns, which is going to lower its win rate, which will lower its played rate. That's all they want to do. They don't want to destroy a card, just uh, reduce its impact, and one mana does that sufficiently. You don't need to adjust stats here. Blizzard prefers mana over stat adjustments because they like to maintain the identity of a card. So I really, really am confident this will go to exactly five mana and nothing else. And then we've got the bad luck Albatross. Similar story here. I think Albatross will retain its effect. I think it's an important counter. They even talked about in other AMA answers how they think Albatross serves as a great way to counter Highlander style decks. So I think they like the effect just fine but they're worried about the impact and power level of the card and bumping it up a mana basically means decks have to spend a little bit more tempo, a little bit more time to get this going, which means some decks will cut it. They'll be like, ah, is it really worth it now? Like, I don't want to spend four mana on that effect. Just slowing it down a hair here and there is all you need to do to pull this one back. I actually don't think Albatross needs a nerf. In fact, a handful of the cards here I don't really think need nerfs, but if it is being targeted, I suspect a one mana change is all we'll see on this one as well. Moving on here to the pair of wild format cards. Now, although I have been a multi-legend player in wild before, and we've even hit the leaderboard in wild before, I have not played a lot of wild recently. So my insights here might be rather limited in scope. I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be, so feel free to listen to these words. 
but you should also seek out some info from wiser and more uh, storied wild personalities out there as well. You guys probably know quite a few awesome ones on YouTube. That said, Open the Waygate was mentioned as a problem, and uh, everybody knows if you've been paying attention to the internet, Twitter, Reddit, etc., wild players hate Quest Mage right now. Basically taking double or triple turns with all kinds of giants just ends every game. It's crazy oppressive deck, etc., and um, this change goes from six spells to 10 spells for open the way gate, which would really help slow that down. I think maybe they'd still be able to get to 10 fairly consistently. I don't know, but I have to imagine you wouldn't want to just change it by one spell or two. Four spells seemed like a really significant change that would allow aggro decks to perhaps race this down before it could get there. Maybe that's excessive again. I don't play enough for a wild right now to know about where this should land, but it seems like Blizzard wants to make a significant move to limit this. They're not going to change the mana cost because quests are always one mana, and I suspect they won't want to change the effect just because it's kind of hard to tweak that. You can make it cost more mana and such, but it's just so universal in what it does, and if they change it, they'll lose the flavor of it. So making the requirement harder seems like the... Uh, avenue of attack here and whatever that number ends up being i don't know but 10 felt like a good one to me and then finally our last card here is blood bloom used currently to cheat out uh darkest hour and summon a bunch of big old minions from your deck and on this one i bumped the mana cost from two to four essentially slowing this down by a couple turns to when you can pull off that swing turn giving other decks more time to find answers, do their own game plan, and uh, hopefully limit this enough that it doesn't feel too oppressive. This is another one where I don't know for sure what the right change is. I think just, again, from a flavor standpoint and from a universality of effect, there's not a lot of leverage to pull here. It's really just mana cost, and if Blizzard wants to make sure that this is no longer a problem, maybe one mana is not enough, push it up two mana, and uh, that could make all the difference. Maybe I'm missing some insights here, but it feels like it would be a solution to the proposed problem. And that said, guys, that wraps it up for my thoughts on these cards. Of course, we don't know what's really going to happen. These may be the worst guesses in history, but Blizzard tends to follow some patterns, so I'm sure at least a couple of these will be pretty much exactly what Blizzard does. Now, that said, when are these changes coming? Uh, it says shortly. I don't know what that means. I'm guessing in the next week or two is my take. Uh, I don't know when we'll find out what they are either, but stay tuned. Of course, as soon as I hear, there's going to be a video confirming which cards are changed for Demon Hunter and what the changes are going to be for the rest of these cards. That said, I want to hear your thoughts here. What should be changed? What will be changed? Uh, what shouldn't be changed? What was left off this list? Why do some of these cards deserve to be nerfed? Why do others not? Share all your opinions here. I don't have a lot of opinions in this one. I'm kind of tossing it up to you guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm curious to hear how the community is going to react to these. That said, most important of all, I think it is cool that Blizzard is monitoring things. They're talking to us. They provided a ton of um, info here. Of course, not all the details, but I think they're still working those out. But used to, they wouldn't have like communicated this to us at all or asked for feedback. So all in all, that's a good thing, and I'm happy to see more communication, more insights, and more regular changes of cards to help make the game a little bit healthier. So leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks much for watching, and until next time, game on.